I'm just gonna say it, people have an obsession with having perfect teeth. Teeth are like one of my biggest turn-ons. The straighter, the f***er I'll get. Now in the past, veneers used to be reserved for celebrities or the ultra rich. I feel like normal people didn't really have them unless they were born with some enamel defect like tetracycline staining or peg laterals or something that feel like it wasn't such an aesthetically driven elective decision. There was definitely more stigma in the past around veneers, but I don't know about you, it feels like overnight, now everyone has them. So when did it become normal to have veneers? And if you guys are new here, hi guys, my name is Dr. Joyce Kong. I'm a cosmetic dentist, owner of Orange and Magnolia Dental Studio and former professor. And I've been thinking a lot about the rise of cosmetic dental procedures and I'm not complaining, but I just don't think everyone needs cosmetic dentistry. And these days I find myself saying no to patients way more than I'm saying yes. So let's talk about this shift. Well, I saw this video from Shelby Church called Pretty Privilege and the Normalization of Plastic Surgery. I think she pretty much nailed it. I'll link it up here for you guys. For those of you who don't know what pretty privilege is, it's basically that you get treated better and have an overall easier life if you are attractive. Now, what's interesting about pretty privilege is that it used to be something that we all sort of observed as part of society, but we rarely spoke about. Like we all know that person who was born abnormally beautiful and it just feels like life is easier for them. It wasn't until last year when this topic exploded on TikTok and we all learned that this is actually called pretty privilege. Guys, pretty privilege is real. Okay, the amount of things that pretty people get away with is astronomical. Pretty privilege is real and here's how you can use it to your advantage. So here are three signs that you're more attractive than you think and this can apply to both men and women. The people who understand pretty privilege the best are the people who either lost a significant amount of weight or just had a massive glow up in general. We see this especially in the realm of social media where people just blow up because because they happen to be attractive. And I'm sure that many of us have thought must be nice for them. Now around that same time, videos on TikTok started blowing up where people started openly talking about the cosmetic procedures that they had gotten. Nobody used to do this. It used to be like really, really hush hush. Like the Kardashians would never cough up to what they had done. And I don't know if you guys remember JLo attributed her glowing skin to olive oil instead of cosmetic procedures. Yeah, it used to be a very sweep under the rug sort of thing where people would pretend that they were just naturally born beautiful because that was the ultimate flex. But now the new trend is to admit what you've gotten done. And people everywhere are realizing that most people are actually not born perfect. Can we just talk about plastic surgery yeah, since we're on let's this? Talk. So I'm just gonna go through all the things that I've done. There's a saying over on TikTok, she's poor, not ugly, meaning Anyone can become beautiful if they just pay for the right procedures or have the right access to talented surgeons. And then to add on to this perfect storm were an influx of medical professionals who joined social media to build their brands and connect with potential patients. And before there wasn't really this amount of access to medical professionals where you could just tag them and get their input and just like pick their brains. But now there are videos all over the internet made by professionals who are speculating and verifying whether they think someone has gotten work done. And of course, I am no exception. Some of my most requested videos are to analyze the smiles of a particular celebrity. For example, I did this video on Chrishell Staus. Let's talk about Chrishell because she has one of the most captivating smiles. What's really smart about what she's done is she focuses more on facial balancing. And although I get tagged in these a lot, I am pretty careful about the videos I make because I do think it's a little ick to say extremely negative things about celebrity smiles because ultimately they are humans too. So I I try to keep it educational and positive instead of like completely roasting them, which unfortunately some of my colleagues do. But anyways, all this to say that people are generally more accepting about cosmetic procedures and there's a lot of buzz that is being generated on all ends. Part of this is also probably some frequency illusion. Ever feel like you're suddenly starting to notice to see something everywhere after you're noticing it for the first time? That's called the biter mainhoff phenomenon. It's when increased exposure to a brand or product makes us feel like it's popping up everywhere, making us more likely to buy it. So all of these forces have literally changed the social stigma surrounding cosmetic procedures. 
But now here's the really interesting part. There are studies that show that you can make a quantifiable more amount of money if you are attractive. And I think Shelby referenced research that shows attractive workers earn $230,000 more in their lifetime than those with average looks. And that attractive servers earn $1,261 more per year which means the landscape of cosmetic procedures has completely changed. Being attractive is no longer a vapid, useless, superficial aspiration. It is an investment. And of course, the smile is at the center point of that. Most of you have heard that study. It's more prevalent in the world of dating, but the study found that the first thing people notice about you is your smile. Not your eyes, but your smile. Weirdly enough, the smile, while being extremely important for first impressions, has always been in the past an afterthought to plastic surgery procedures like getting boobs or a nose job, facelift, fillers, Botox. Only recently has cosmetic dentistry become an elective procedure that people want just because. And it feels like this happened overnight, but it did not. In fact, some of this influx is a direct result from the explosion of aesthetic procedures. They walked so that cosmetic dentistry could run. Now, personally, I'm not against plastic surgery. I feel like if there's one thing someone wants to change that is within their means and helps them to be more confident, why not? I think the problem is when the entire face is done and everyone starts to look like each other. I was recently watching this show called Singles Inferno, which is a Korean dating show, but every single Korean girl last season seemingly had a lot of surgery and they all had the similar noses. And some people call it the Pinocchio nose where it just points up like this. And some people call it the Barbie nose, but Korea is pretty big on plastic surgery. They highly value physical appearance. But weirdly enough, I don't think that they're very big on veneers yet because I don't see a lot of Korean celebrities with the perfect teeth to match their perfect faces. I'm sure it's inevitable. It's like the next thing that they'll be obsessed with probably. And why do I think that? Again, plastic surgeries seem to open the door for cosmetic dentistry because the more things you fix, the more the sunk cost fallacy kicks in. Like, well, you've already fixed everything else. Might as well fix the next thing. And working in the aesthetics field, I will tell you that the chase for perfection is becoming seriously crazy. What happens is that by fixing one thing after the next, there will eventually be something that didn't used to bother you that much that now bothers you a lot more because it is within the context of everything else that has been fixed. Meaning, flaws stand out more the closer you get to perfection. Now, what people are just starting to realize, and one of the reasons cosmetic dentistry is now so popular is that all of these enhancements that people get have a trickle down effect, which can ultimately negatively impact the youthfulness of the smile, which again, is the first thing people notice. So here's what happens to the smile as we age. Our upper lip drops every year. So what we perceive as a youthful smile is one that shows an appropriate amount of teeth. So an example of how cosmetic procedures affect the smile is if you get a lot of lip filler, which makes the lips look really, really big. All of a sudden, your lips are casting a shadow over your teeth. And ultimately, I think this is why people keep getting stuff done because the procedures are done independently of each other by specialists in each body part. And when you fix one thing, another thing eventually needs to be fixed. In my opinion, veneers are not inherently good, bad, or evil. Neither are piercings or tattoos or hair extensions. I've seen firsthand where people with insecurities get their veneers and then they get that promotion, they get the girl, they walk taller. And I had a patient message me this the other day, I'll put it up on the screen. I mean, what a wonderful feeling as a provider to know that this person is out in the world, like living their best life. So if fixing something gives off that dramatic of a payoff, who is to say it isn't worth it. If it leads to having better confidence and not having to hold back when you smile, it might be priceless for some. And some of you watching may never even have an interest in doing any cosmetic enhancements, but always remember that everyone has their own unique struggles and insecurities. Especially when you see research like this done by Kelton, he found that those with straight white smiles were more likely to be hired or promoted over those with broken, crooked, or discolored teeth. And also two out of every three study participants said that they are more likely to remember a person with a great smile than they are someone who has problems with their teeth or who doesn't smile. So I think it's hard to say there isn't added life value when someone smiles more. Every single patient that I have done veneers on tells me that they can't stop smiling when before they never used to smile. 
The investment in question goes beyond the monetary return. It's an investment in yourself. While self-improvement or enhancements can be a great thing and yield so many wonderful returns, well, if everyone is doing it, then society is experiencing kind of a weird new reality, especially because the more people are getting things done, we as a society have started to lose a sense of what natural even looks like or natural aging. Like if everyone is getting Botox, imagine that one person who has never gotten Botox Instead of looking natural, they just look old. And what I'm trying to say is that our perspective of natural has changed so much over the past couple of years. I see this in my practice too, where people will bring me inspo photos for their veneers and the colors are so white. They are not naturally occurring colors in nature. Some of them look like toilet bowls. But because of social media being their lens and with the advent of filters, people are less in touch with what natural actually is. And what's funny enough is that these patients, these same patients come to me pointing at these photos, saying they want their teeth to look natural. And I'm like, there's nothing natural about this photo that you just brought me. It's not a naturally occurring color. It is the evolution of a beauty standard that is really a moving target. Things like this, beauty, attractiveness, naturalness, are partially hardwired, but also quite subjective in nature. And so you start to wonder how it can hold any value in an economic context. Like how does one determine attractiveness? Well, this Forbes article entitled, Do Pretty People Really Make More Money? <laughs> explores the idea of the monetary return that being attractive brings. Funnily enough, there is something on the opposite end of the spectrum, the idea of the ugliness penalty, which is just how it sounds. You get paid less if you are ugly. Well, what researchers actually found is that it's not just physical attractiveness that drives higher salaries. It's the combination of attractiveness, intelligence, and good health. Studies have shown that humans are somewhat hardwired to find certain traits attractive, especially those that lend to good health or fertility. There is an unconscious attraction to certain fertility cues that make people more attractive because they are more likely to give off healthier offspring. And in that same vein, when people get veneers, they are ultimately trying to showcase health which is why often they don't want their teeth to be more yellow and more worn down. They often want them to be brighter and more perfect. There's also this factor that traditionally good oral health has been somewhat of a privilege reserved for those who can afford quality dental care, which is a whole video in itself. But getting back to the psychology and the rise of cosmetic dental procedures, veneers are an easy way to reset your status in life to reflect where you wanna be, not where you came from. And yes, it is kind of sad when you think about this idea of erasing parts of yourself that make you you, but also can be liberating for those of you who want to close the chapter on traumas or things that psychologically were really holding them back. And sometimes the teeth are a physical manifestation of a really bad time in someone's life or a time where there was a lot of neglect and pain things that people want to move forward from. We've all heard this saying, when you look good, you feel good. And I am a true believer in this. I know that when I wear a cute new outfit, that I just feel so much more confident and I walk a little differently. And confidence can definitely impact how you show up, not only in your personal life, but professional life as well. That's not to say that everyone who looks good automatically feels good, but let's be real. It's a lot easier to be happy when things come easily to you. And I know from firsthand experience Experience that people who are attractive get lots of little perks in life that you could never imagine. For example, my best friend was a model in New York City and she told me there was this app for models where you get free appetizers and cocktails all because they wanted pretty people to frequent their establishment and share on socials. I applied for the app, but obviously I am not a model and I was rejected despite having more followers. I'm not bitter. I'm not bitter. I know my place, but if you only knew how much free stuff you can get just for being pretty, it's pretty crazy. And I wouldn't have even known that these things happen if I wasn't associated with a conventionally pretty best friend. Like the amount of free wine pairings I had at Michelin restaurants. And and if I had never lived that life and had a taste of it, I would be stuck in this idealistic world, but it really opened my eyes as to how being associated with pretty people is just good for business. And people just naturally want to surround themselves with more attractive people. Every single day, I get DMs on Instagram from influencers who want to collab for free veneers. It was during the pandemic that I personally noticed an uptick in these DMs. And I assume it's because people were wearing masks. They were all of a sudden 
and staring at themselves on Zoom, and a lot of them had some disposable income that they would have spent on things like vacations. Many also realized that they hated their jobs and they wanted to start growing an online business like being a creator or an influencer. Like I remember at the time, people were just blowing up on TikTok and all of a sudden they had a lot more money. So there was definitely a way where people were just spending more time on social media and being influenced even if they were the influencer. And being the influencer, being influenced, cascades into everyone else being influenced. And a lot of my friends in the cosmetic industry experienced the same flood of interest. The pandemic were busy times for plastic surgeons, med spas, and cosmetic dentists. According to the American Society of Plastic Surgeons, there was a 19% increase in 2019 of cosmetic procedures and nearly 50% in 2020. Now with the rise of these cosmetic procedures, combined with the increase of videos that people were posting online about what they have had done, it's led to more overall awareness of veneers. But when I think back, think, think back, one of the big tipping points was definitely when the turkey veneers started blowing up. If you guys remember, there were all these videos where people would go to Turkey to get their entire faces done. Like there would be airplanes full of people bandaged up from head to toe. And the horror of seeing these people's teeth drilled down into tiny little nubs. It hurts my heart. But sometimes bad press is also good press. It brought about a ton of conversations from people like me who made videos educating the public on the idea of responsible aesthetics and the biologic cost of doing irreversible dental procedures. So you would think people would be more scared of getting veneers, but how the turkey phenomenon impacted the dental industry is that it made people highly aware that veneers are not just for the rich and they aren't just for celebrities. People were getting on planes to get their teeth done for cheap in other countries. It made veneers accessible at a different price point and they were no longer reserved for those who were just naturally lucky to be born with a good set of teeth or parents who could afford orthodontics, you could now make your own luck. You just hop on a plane and go to Turkey. And once people would get their veneers done, they would make videos about the process, further creating buzz. There were so many videos that came out on veneer education. I also noticed that in my industry, there's been a surge of dentists going into cosmetics. So I wanna shed a little bit of light on the dental industry and the shift. The reality is that traditional dentistry is not the career that it once was. You have to work extra hard to make a good living because insurance reimbursements are going down every year and the cost of wages for team members is skyrocketing. Meanwhile, people always complain about going to the dentist and how expensive it is, which I believe is why there have been so many dentists wanting to go from offering services that people need to services that people want because this idea of affordability really boils down to priorities and people are willing to spend without complaints if they want something. So with more dentists who are getting into cosmetic dentistry, the industry itself is in the middle of a major glow up. I mean, just think about this. You may have noticed that the veneers of the past didn't typically look great. They looked more thick, opaque, and kind of like chiclets. They also required more tooth structure removal. While the new veneers are now natural, bright, and realistic, they require very little tooth structure removal. A glow up indeed. <laughs> a glow up that we all love. The coolest thing is that one should not be able to tell that veneers were even done if they were done well. And I think this is just another reason why people are more accepting of having these procedures done because when things seem less invasive, more people are willing to do it. We see this all the time when people have completely frozen and overfilled faces from too much Botox and filler. These people need surgery and yet they're getting more and more Botox and filler because they think it is less invasive, even if the effects wear off in a few months and they don't look as natural. The cost for maintenance adds up for these procedures. I know, Botox and filler is not cheap and it wears out in just a couple of months, but people are willing to spend loads on things that they think are reversible which has led to a shift in the industry where more and more dentists are providing minimally invasive veneers. And personally, I love that. I'm all about the minimal invasive procedures. These types of procedures require more experience, more precision, better labs, better ceramics, but are a benefit to the patient and a huge step in the right direction for cosmetics. 
What I think is a step in a questionable direction is the no prep or no drill veneers. Theoretically, I love the idea that something is completely reversible and these things can be such a life-changing option in the right situation. However, I think a lot of dentists are doing these on the wrong types of candidates, resulting in a really unnatural buck tooth look. And I have an entire Instagram video where I refer to this. And this video sparked some conversation between people who were like, well, then is it better to do it the old school way or is it better to do it without drilling? I guess you can say that if there was no drilling and it looks bad, no harm, no foul. So I guess no preps, no drilling will always have that as a positive. If you really think about what's worse, it's definitely the drilling away unnecessary tooth structure that used to happen a lot in the past. And I do quite a lot of revision dentistry in my practice. Practice, the teeth underneath these old veneers are basically chopped down into little nubs. They look like the turkey teeth, which is horrible because losing that amount of tooth structure is not necessary to achieve results in modern times. Now, I'm not judging because those veneers were done years ago and the technology has gotten so much better for veneers. I'm saying that sometimes I see people who are still doing those types of preps even in modern times. And that I believe is criminal. So I can see why so many patients who come in specifically want no prep veneers. They're very aggressive. Like they want no prep veneers and like they really, really want it. And half the time I'm saying no. What they don't realize is obviously if I didn't have to pick up a drill, that would be amazing. But more often than not, I have to say no because I don't want them to leave with huge fake looking teeth. Doing no prep veneers on the wrong person is what takes us back in the direction of the chiclet era, which cosmetic dentistry as a whole is really trying to bury in the past. So personally, I am loving this glow up that veneers are getting. I love natural looks. I love minimally invasive. I love seeing people smile more and more confidently. And if you could see the messages I get from patients who have had their lives changed with these procedures, they're everyday people who just wanted to smile without having to hold back. It has just been so cool. But here's my PSA, if you will entertain it. I made this video so people can start to understand their motivations for getting these procedures, the societal pressures that are baked in, and also get some backstory as to what's happening in the dental industry. But just remember, not all things on your face need to be perfect. And one of these days, we will look around and wonder why we didn't prioritize preserving character, the things that make you uniquely you. I feel that in the age of AI and as technology progresses with more deep fakes, preserving those elements will actually be what makes us human. And so I am all for cosmetic enhancements. I'm all for self-improvement, but I am not for everyone looking the same. And even in my practice, we spend a lot of time customizing these veneers uniquely for each patient instead of giving them all the same cookie cutter teeth. Letting patients have a say over what their teeth looks like is an important part of the process so that we don't lose them in the sea of perfect teeth. But also if you want cookie cutter, we can do that for you. So I'm wondering what you guys think about the rise of cosmetic dentistry. Are you for it? Are you against? And if any of you guys have stories where you have personally benefited from getting your teeth done, like a raise at work, that would be really fun for me to read. As always, join the fam, hit the follow button so you don't miss any of my future videos. And I appreciate you being here. Bye.